Today I'm going to talk about the idea of using transactions that normally would operate on logical entities in a database to now also extend them to support the maintenance and management operations on underlying physical data structures in the system. So pretty much every database that has come out in the last decade that supports transactions is implementing some variant of, of multi-versioning. But the challenge is that there's this impedance mismatch between the higher level transactional semantics that you have in the multi-versioning and the underlying physical data structures that have to support them. So to explain what I mean, say this is a rough overview of what a multi-version database might look like. We have an index, we have a data table, and we have a place to store our, uh, the version chains for, for the different versions of, of each tuple. And so this system is gonna be an amalgamation of a bunch of different data structures, which by themselves are going to be single versioned. Again, the challenge is then how to expose the notion of, of multi-versioning in the system to these, these data structures. So let's say I have two transactions that show up. The first one wants to delete a, a key from a tuple, and the second transaction wants to be able to read that, that tuple. So under snapshot isolation, the second transaction should be able to see this, this key in the table because this transaction has not committed yet, assuming these guys are running at the same time. So to mark this, this tuple as deleted from this transaction, that's easy to do. We just flip a bit somewhere in the data table to say that this particular tuple has been deleted, and any transaction that comes along later won't be able to see it because they, they know to ignore it. Then the challenge though is from the implementation standpoint is how do we then decide when is it safe to go ahead and, and delete the version chain from the delta storage and remove the entry from, from the index. And so what needs to happen is we wanna be able to defer these maintenance operations till the system is deemed that it's safe to do this. And the challenge though is that there's nothing in these systems that are aware of transactions because they're just you know, f these physical data structures. So we need a way to easily extend this and, and, and support this, uh, these operations. So this is the idea of our deferred action framework. And so it's a way to build this, a, a, a multi-version system such that you can support maintenance operations on uh, physical data structures and, and have the same visibility guarantees that, that tuples would normally have under uh, MVCC. So we're gonna introduce this idea of an action and the framework only exposes a, a simple API or single method that allows a transaction to invoke the deferral of the execution of a given action. So when a transaction commits, all the actions that they deferred get tagged with the commit timestamp of that transaction and they're put into a global queue. And then when the system knows that there's no transaction that's actively running with a timestamp that's less than an action's tag timestamp, we know that it's safe to go ahead and process that, that action. So going back to our example that we had before, uh, say our first transaction comes along and wants to delete the key from, from the table. So when it begins, it's given the timestamp, uh, it's given a begin timestamp of T1. And in our action queue, we're gonna maintain the, the global timestamp of the oldest transaction that's actually running. So at this point now, this gets updated to T1. So now when we do the delete on, on the, for the key in the table, we'll go ahead and mark it as logically deleted in the data table, but we're gonna go ahead and defer, uh, generate some deferred actions that will actually do the, the physical removal of the version chain and the key from, from the underlying index. But of course, we're not gonna invoke these just yet because we have to wait to see whether this transaction commits. So now that select transaction comes along, it begins, it's given timestamp T2, so we update our uh, oldest timestamp in the action queue. It's, it's allowed to go ahead and do the read uh, and, and you can see the key that it wants to look up because the first transaction has not committed yet and we haven't applied any of these actions. So then now say this transaction that did the delete, it commits, it gets a end timestamp of T3. And then now uh, all of its actions get put into the queue and they're tagged with the commit timestamp, the end timestamp of our transaction, which is not T3. So in this case here, since we're tagged with T3, we know we can't uh, invoke these actions just yet because we have to wait until our timestamp is less than the oldest timestamp. So then now this transaction over here, it goes ahead and commits. It gets the end timestamp of T4. Uh, we then update our global timestamp here. And then now it's deemed safe for us to execute and revoke these actions and do the cleanup that we need to do in our physical data structures. So we can go ahead and, and remove the version chain and then go ahead and delete the index key. So what's interesting about these deferrals is that you can extend the idea 
uh, to to guarantee more uh, more rigorous ordering of certain physical or certain operations uh, by deferring actions multiple times. So let's say I have two transactions. One transaction wants to drop a table. Another transaction wants to delete a key from the table. It, it, in order to make sure that I don't actually do the deletion of that table bef uh, in, until the second transaction deletes all the keys from the table, I can defer the, the, the dropping of that table uh, multiple times in my action queue to make sure that anything that else, that any other operation or action that wants to update the table or make a change to it, they're all processed and finished before I actually do the, do the delete. So I can have, I can chain multiple deferrals together to make sure that I am doing things in the correct order. So the, the drop table transaction uh, starts, gets timestamp T1, then we go ahead and, and do our drop table. And the generate, the action is going to generate is going to be a deferral of another deferral of the action that actually deletes the table and its corresponding indexes. So then now our delete transaction starts, it gets timestamp T2. Uh, we go ahead and do the delete and it generates the actions just like, just like before, where we unlink the version chain and delete the key from the index. Then now our drop table transaction commits, its deferred action gets put into the queue with the timestamp T3, because that's the commit timestamp of the transaction. Then our delete transaction commits, it gets timestamp T4, its actions get put in the queue with timestamp T4. And then now at this point here, because our deferral timestamp is waiting for timestamp T3, and now the oldest timestamp is T5, assuming another transaction has come along, it's now safe for, go, for us to process this action. But all this action does is just take the inner action deferred again by putting it back in the queue and assigning it the timestamp of, of the oldest tr transaction that was, that was outstanding. So then now we can go ahead and continue processing our queue. So we'll go ahead and unlink the version chain, delete the index from the key. And then now at this point here, we know that there's no active transaction that could be modifying or making a change to the table we're trying to drop. Furthermore, we know there's no transaction that's trying to read that table because it's been logically deleted from the catalog. So therefore, it's deemed safe for us to go ahead and delete the, the physical data structures for this, for this table and its corresponding indexes. So we built this uh, deferred action framework originally to do uh, garbage collection for MPCC, but then it turns out it's extensible enough to support a bunch of different uh, maintenance operations in the database system. So I've already shown how to do index cleaning. It turns out you can also use it to do uh, index uh, cleaning when you do the updated index attribute. So it's a delete followed by an insert. So all you need to do, again, is just queue up a defer an action that says delete the key, and that gets processed after the transaction gets committed. We also can use it for cache and validation. So say you have a prepared statement, uh, you want to compile it and generate a cache plan that so they can reuse it uh, between invocations. Well, if someone comes along now and does an alter table where they drop a column that's being accessed in the prepared statement, uh, in addition to queuing up or deferring an action to actually remove the column physically from the data table, you can also have another action to go ahead and clear out the, uh, the plan cache. And again, this is all done transactionally and make sure that there's no query that's, or no active transaction that could be using this cache plan uh, before we go ahead and drop it. The last one we can use it for is do data transformation. So say your database system supports a hybrid storage model like row store and column store together. And say you have a background uh, thread that monitors the access pattern of, of different blocks of data. And when it recognizes that a block's not gonna be updated then anymore, it goes ahead and uh, converts it into a column store block. That's just a delete from the row store block and then an insertion into the column store block. And then all we need to do is defer an action to go ahead and delete the block when we know no other transaction could be uh, accessing it anymore. Uh, and it, this is all done transactionally in a safe manner. All right, so we implemented the deferred action framework in our noise page database system. Uh, and we originally had built it for the using, oh, shh. Hold up, that's my phone, hold up. So we integrated our deferred action framework into our noise page system and we implemented the uh, garbage collection for MVCC. And so we're gonna compare three different implementation configurations. The first is using Noise Pages' original garbage collection implementation, which was a dedicated thread that only did garbage collection for MVCC. And then we're gonna have two variants of the deferred action framework. The first is when the deferred, uh, there's threads that are dedicated to doing pro nothing but processing the action queue. 
And the other one is when we have cooperative threads, meaning the worker threads that normally process, process transactions, every so often they'll go look in the action queue and see if there's any work to be done. So along the x-axis, x-axis we're scaling up the number of worker threads uh, in the system. So we see that the original implementation of the garbage collection thread in, in noise page uh, didn't scale past four, four threads. Uh, then with the deferred action framework, now we're dedicating uh, more and more threads to, to processing the action queue, but we see we still, we, plat we still plateau at 16 threads, and this is because we're taking away threads that would normally be used to process transactions, and they're doing nothing but processing the, the action queue. And so what we found is that the cooperative approach works best because this has a nice trade-off between uh, the worker threads executing transactions and going also and processing the queue. And this has a nice back pressure, me back pressure mechanism uh, because if transactions are gen generating a lot of uh, actions, then they'll, they'll end up spending more time processing the queue instead of going executing more transactions and getting you know, a further backlog. And so this prevents, you know, this has a nice trade-off between not having too much garbage in the system and still having uh, th threads you know, be able to process transactions. So now you may look at this and say, well, wait a minute, hold up, Andy. Wasn't it in Cider 2017 when you came and presented Peloton and made a big deal about this is the, this is the database system we're building at Carnegie Mellon University? What happened to Peloton? What, you know, what is this noise based system? Bottom line is Peloton is dead. We killed the project in 2019, and this was for a combination of engineering, performance, and marital reasons. And so we scrapped all the source code in 2019 and have, have started from scratch with Noise Page. And so Noise Page is still Postgres compatible like, like, like Peloton was. It's still an in-memory HTAP database system. Um, some changes we've made since then is that we're, our storage manager is Apache Arrow compatible. Um, we're still we're now doing hyperstyle MVCC uh, as a column store. And we're still doing query compilation, but it's a hybrid approach that combines the vectorized primitives from VectorWise, uh, the pipeline compilation from Hyper, and the MemSQL style DSL where you convert the query plan into an intermediate language before sending it off to, uh, to LLVM for compilation to machine code. So this is still a self-driving system. That is the overarching goal of the noise page project. And so that means that we're not striving for ultimate best performance at all times, because then you end up competing with the Germans and that's usually not fun. Um, so we're more worried about engineering the system to be better for modeling uh, to, to expose to our autonomous and planning components. So we had the first release of noise page came out in, uh, in, in October uh, last year. So there's all the details of the album is available online. So what did I show today? I showed how we could leverage the concurrency protocols that we use for multi-version transaction support to now apply them for doing physical data structure management. And so that you have all the same visibility guarantees that you transactions normally would have for physical versions, but now we can use that for, uh, for you know, the maintenance operations. So, uh, the top list here are the primary authors that wrote the paper and with us and, and did the implementation. And the bottom is just a sample of the students that have been working on noise page uh, in the last two years. The, the team has gotten quite large because a lot of students lost their internships because of the COVID. Um, and so we've been sort of scaled up pretty big. So with that, let's do questions.